it's Jennifer, and let's learn about the history of thimbles. Did you ever wonder who first thought of thimbles? Thimbles were designed to help protect fingertips while sewing. Their early, while sewing. In their earliest form, thimbles date back to approximately 30,000 years ago when mammoth hunters sewed decorations like pearls onto leather. Thimbles have been made from many different materials over the years, including metal, leather, rubber, glass, china, whalebone, and ivory. The modern thimble was invented in England in 1695 by a Dutch metal worker. At the time, it was called a thumb bell because it was shaped like a bell and most often worn over the thumb. After the Industrial Revolution, the size and shape of thimbles changed because they were no longer being made by hand. Earlier models were thicker and featured a dome on the top, while machine-made thimbles were thinner and featured a flatter top. While their primary use was to protect fingertips when pushing a needle through fabric or leather, thimbles were also used for a variety of other purposes. Women of the night used them to tap on windows and doors to announce their presence. In the 1800s, they were also useful to measure spirits, giving rise to the saying, just a thimbleful. Today, thimbles are still used for sewing and have also become popular items to collect. People who collect thimbles are called digit digit abulists digitabulists interesting so let's go within a little bit more originally thimbles were solely used for protecting the fingers i read that part um thimbles were also used Thim a thimble knocking also referred to the practice of the victorian seamstress school seamstresses who would tap on the heads of unruly pupils with thimbles. Thimbles have also been used as love tokens and to, com to commemorate important events. A miniature thimble is even one of the tokens in the game of Monopoly. After the 18th century, machines were invented to produce thimbles. Because they weren't made by hand, the shape and thickness of the metal changed. Early thimbles tend to be quite thick and have a pronounced dome top. Later, they became thinner and flatter on top. In the 19th century, 19th century, many thimbles were made from silver. But because silver is such a soft metal, it was easily pierced by a steel needle. People still wanted beautiful, elegant thimbles. So Charles Horner solved the problem by using a steel core that was coated in silver. He called his thimble the Dorcas which has now become a collector's item. Other valuable collectibles include many er early American thimbles made of whalebone or tooth featuring miniature uh, scrimshaw designs. That's pretty cool. You can find many of those rare, rare items in museums. During the First World War, silver thimbles were taken from the bodies of fallen soldiers and melted down, melted down to buy hospital equipment. Thimbles today are mostly made of rubber or metal and are used to protect sewers from sharp needles and tweezers. People, the, the <laughs> digitabulists, um, <clears throat> are thimble collectors. That's kind of cool. I, I, that's an interesting word. <laughs> Those are the thimble collectors. And they go around, they obviously go around and collect thimbles from the old ones to even new ones. But there are many different shapes and sizes of thimbles and even thimble bells. But I found that really interesting and I'm, you can look online and find many different shapes of thimbles. They're actually quite beautiful and lovely to look at. So next chance you get take a look at many different beautiful thimbles on the internet. They're really cool. In the meantime, please stay safe, be kind to one another, and as always, happy yarning. Bye now.